Just be glad for all you have that's in today. Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction. Finally, enough to um, OK KO, Let's Be Heroes, episodes 43 through 52. The final 10 episodes of season one. Um, so yeah, as I said last week, uh, I am doing the final episodes this week, all 10 of them, in one go. Uh, well, in one video, at least. I'm going to try to record it all in one go, but if I have to take a break at some point, I will. Um, and the reason for doing this is simply because I want to move on to the new schedule. But as I've talked about before, due to trying to just kind of cut things back once again a little bit, uh, to make things easier on myself and not push myself. And give myself a couple days off during the week um, as well. Other than, you know, just Sunday, which, I mean, I guess technically I don't do much of anything or haven't lately. <laughs> uh, but I'll get to that in a bit. Um, but to give myself some time off and some breaks and stuff from a lot of heavy recording and stuff. Um, and, and just to have a little bit of free space in there that I don't have to worry about. Uh, we will be moving to a new schedule that will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, Monday will be the poll stuff, so all reactions that are poll-based will happen on Mondays. Um, Wednesdays will be currently airing stuff, or as close to as possible. In some cases, if, like a Netflix series, for example, might be a little off with the currently airing, basically. <laughs> Uh, Fridays will be the donation reward day, um, just day, the day when I react to shows and stuff uh, that are rewards for donations. And Saturdays will just be the same thing we have going for now and just kind of cut back when we're uh, done with that and all. Like, as I've said before, when JoJo ends, we'll probably just keep it to MLP for that point. Um... And Sundays will be Ori in the Blind Force. We will be continuing that once the new schedule hits into effect, which will be next week. Um, so I wanted to get done with She-Ra and OKKO OK to kind of cut back on that all. Because those were the shows that were kind of just outliers in that. I will be finishing She-Ra this week. Um, and I will be getting to OKKO OK today. Um, I've got it all downloaded. I've got all 10 episodes downloaded, obviously. I've got them all put into one video with the intros and outros cut out, so all of that is good. Um, it'll take about two hours or so to uh, completely get through, but it should be fine. It should be fine. Ugh, excuse me. Um, and yeah, I don't know what to expect with how this uh, season's going to end. I don't know, like, where it's going to go at all, because, again, with this series, it's mostly episodic. There's not too much of an ongoing story yet. There's been a little bit of stuff that is definitely moving forward and progressing and everything, such as this, uh, the mysterious hooded figure and everything. Um, but all in all, there's not much of an actual story to it. It's just kind of like, oh, what's the uh, plot of the episode? Uh, the kind of enemy of the week or the problem of the week that they have to go through. Stuff like that. Um, and, and just like with any episodes of this show, some of these last ten will be better than the others. Some of them I might not even like. <laughs> That's just a hazard to get through with this. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited to get through all of this. Um, and then I'm going to make another announcement video today as well because I also have to announce a couple other things. But I'm going to say it here as well for those of you who are watching this. Um, I am still moving this month, and we actually got an update on that. Um, tomorrow at noon, my dad is going to my dad is going to go, and uh, they're going to close the deal. So he should be getting the key. Everything should be set. Um, we're not moving this weekend. It's it's way too late of notice. We still have way too much to pack. Still, it's it's not going to happen. Uh, but we might be moving next weekend, um, and, and I just don't know how that's going to go yet. Um, I'm, I'm going to, we're, I, I assume we're waiting until we actually have the key and everything to fully make the decision, but we definitely, 
once the decision is like set in stone, I will let you guys know. Because as I said before, um, when we uh, move and everything, a couple days before, a couple days after, probably going to have to take off of everything during that time. Um, just due to lack of ability to do it all. I mean, I, I want to, we we're going to have to focus on this move and we have to get everything set up. And I've mentioned before, I want to get like a proper, like better recording uh, situation set up. Because as you know, sometimes when I'm like sitting out here in the living room at this house, uh, the light can shine on my face sometimes and it's just like really annoying. So I'm hoping I can get something figured out better at the new place. Uh, we'll just kind of have to see. But either way, either way, I am excited to see what we have in store for this last set of episodes. Um, and I just, I, I just really hope it ends up being very good uh, for the most part. <laughs> Again, I don't expect every episode to be good. I don't expect to like every episode. But I, I hope that at least the mo majority of them are good. <laughs> um, and yeah. Just as another reminder, this Saturday, uh, JoJo and MLP uh, will probably be late again, um, just because I am going to Motor City Pride um, here in Detroit. And I won't be there the entire time, but I don't know exactly how long I'll be there and when I'll be getting back and stuff, so we'll, we'll just kind of have to play that by ear and see what happens. Um, but hopefully it shouldn't be that big of an issue. It, it shouldn't be that bad. Um, it, it, would, it definitely shouldn't be as bad as last week. Um, and again, I'll keep you all updated on everything going on with the moving situation. But for now, we should get into OKKO. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction. And after you uh, watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. Well, episodes, bunch of episodes. So, that being said, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so KO has finally learned to control his TKO power, along with leveling up to level one he has finally reached level one on his pow card and yeah at first when this final episode which was a double length episode by the way at first when it started to uh when it started i, I was wondering how is this gonna be a um a big grand finale but yeah it delivered very heavily this felt like a season finale it felt like it was properly built up to with all the stuff building up to uh, uh, Boxman Jr. And it felt like it ended in a legitimately big way by having some major changes. Not only with uh, KO um, keeping or, or learning to manage the TKO powers by basically making a deal with TKO. Um, and not only with him reaching level one on the POW card, but it also had... Boxman thrown into the sun and the company taken over by Daryl, which I really did not expect, like, at any point before that episode. But when we, when we found out that he had betrayed Boxman and all, it's like it instantly, like, yeah, okay, Boxman's done. Daryl would obviously be the one to take over at that point. It, it just made sense. But, like, prior to that, it's like that thought had never occurred to me because Daryl was always kind of like the joke robot. I mean, compared with all of the others, he was always kind of a joke. He was always kind of silly and ridiculous. Um, I mean, I mean, all the others are a lot more serious about things, and even though they all have their quirks as well, of course, um, they've never been quite as goofy and unreliable as Daryl. But Daryl surprised, um, surprised a lot of people, I think, in this finale um, with how far he was willing to go. He felt betrayed by his, well, by his father and um, 
he decided to betray him back. Now, the way he said it before he launched Boxman into the sun, um, the way he worded it and everything kind of implies that uh, he was trying to do it to get Boxman to, like, be proud of him because of how evil it, uh, how evil the betrayal was. So I think, to a degree, he still wanted Boxman's approval. Now, the thing that this uh, brings up as well, though, um, is Boxman just dead? I mean, because you can't survive being launched into the sun. And I understand that OKKO OK especially works on a lot of cartoon logic, but come on, that's a bit of a stretch. Like, that would be a massive stretch. The only way I think they could bring him back is if, like, somehow before he was launched into the sun, he had uh, set some kind of contingency plan just in case, and a robot version of him came back with all of his memories and, uh, well, just way of thinking and everything. That's the only thing I could think of that would make it work. Unless Boxman himself was a robot, he definitely seemed to be uh, kind of cyborg-like. Um, but if he, maybe he was actually just a straight-up robot the entire time. But I don't know, because, I, I mean, I would say it seems like he aged, but at the same time, we saw that uh, all, of the, all of his robot children also seemed to age. Um, but rather, instead of actually aging from those baby forms, um, it's more like he just upgraded them and built them into new bodies and stuff as they mentally matured. So, yeah. Um, now, I'm not going to talk about otherwise every single episode we watched. It's just I don't think I'm going to have a, l enough time to do so. Um, and on top of that, I just think that uh, there's just too much to talk about. Most of my thoughts, I, I feel like you could tell what I thought of each of these episodes. Um, so, so I'm not going to go through it. I'll, I'll just mention maybe a couple things here and there. Um, one such thing I do want to mention, I know it seems silly, but I just think it's adorable and hilarious that Shannon has human feet. I, I, I mentioned it during the reaction. I've seen fan art of that. I've seen fan art of her with human feet. I've seen fan art of her with the, you know, normal robot feet and stuff. And, and I thought it was just like a fun little fan art thing, like an, uh, a headcanon that maybe she has human feet under that. Um, but apparently, no, that's a real thing. And again, as I said in the reaction, it's, it, I guess it's a little bit of a spoiler, but that's something I really don't mind that much. Um, now, there was a lot of the stuff with um, the action news going on in these episodes. That became a lot bigger of a plot line going into this final arc, um, which I don't mind at all, by the way. I, I think it actually works well. It's just I, I'm surprised a little bit as well that they went so heavy into that. Um, there was the episode where everyone was being turned into skeletons, and that episode was just... I mean, granted, it was a dream and all, but it, it was kind of weird, especially with uh, Real Magic Skeleton barely having a part in it and not having much of a reaction to it. Just kind of saying, like, oh, you'll get used to it. It, it was a little silly, and the, the guy who was selling it was very much a flim-flammer. Um... He was definitely one of those kinds of characters, um, <laughs> which I don't mind at all. I think those are some really fun characters, but it, it definitely, of course, brought me to some uh, memories of the Flim Flam Brothers from MLP. It also made me think of uh, the, the song Razzle Dazzle from Chicago, the, the musical, which if you haven't uh, watched, by the way... Um, it's, it's fantastic. I, I would suggest the movie version uh, with Richard Gere and all that. Uh, John C. Riley is in it as well. It's, it's pretty good. It's not the best musical movie I've seen, but it's pretty good. Um, and, and yeah, there's definitely a lot to think of that from there. Um, and then there was the one where we found out that Logic, the, uh, the barber robot, was actually built by Boxman, which is, I guess understandable. I guess all robots come from evil sources. Um, but we see that uh, Logic was actually like exceptionally good at making Boxmore 
um, well, really successful. But Boxman himself had his own plans and kind of ruined everything. Um, so Logic ended up uh, becoming friends with Gar and taking a job as a barber at the plaza. Um, it was a, that was a really good episode. Like, I really liked that episode. Not only because of the depth and development it gave to Logic, but it just, it was really well paced. It gave a lot of, uh, a lot of history to Boxman and Boxmore, and, and just really felt, uh, it, like it was written and handled properly. We also had a lot of Dendi in these episodes, and I do not mind that at all. You guys know I love Dendi. Dendi's amazing. Um, and I like how a lot of it did focus on her trying to figure out TKO and get that, uh, all properly, uh, handled, uh, trying to help KO master that power without losing control. And I like how the episode that really introduced that and all, Dendi went too far. She went too far and was, uh, completely disregarding KO's feelings and fears and I like that. I mean, I don't like that, but I like that they did that because it's a good storyline. Yes, it's been done in a lot of other media. It's been done to death. But it's not a bad thing, necessarily. A lot of people say, oh, because it's been done to death, it's automatically bad. No. No. Things that have been done a lot can still be done well, even if it's nothing new. And I think it was still done well. Dendi uh, doing it th that way and making those mistakes, it, it makes perfect sense for her character. And the way she came to realize it and everything also makes sense for her character. It, it felt like a proper progression for her, and it continues to show how she kind of works from this uh, more scientific mindset to becoming more attuned to human emotion. And... I like that. It, it, it's so perfect for her development to continue doing that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think it worked exceptionally well here. Um, we had the van episode, which included the race with uh, Red, and I thought that was that was really fun. Um, it, it's good to see Enid and Red are still hanging out and stuff. I still ship the fuck out of them. <laughs> um, it, it's good to see that that's an ongoing thing. Uh, there was also another episode in here where it was just a, like a bunch of mini episodes, like all tied into one. They they didn't really seem super important. It was like just a bunch of random little things here and there. Um, each one having its own kind of focus and its own kind of, uh, well, story going on. Um, not really too much to report there. Uh, but there was also the episode where K.O. was working with the burrito guy, whose name I cannot think of at the moment. Uh, as well as Baby T to find the galaxy truffle, uh, to make the galaxy truffle spaghetti for uh, his mom. And I thought that episode was funny, cute, and ridiculous at the same time. The galaxy truffles being alive and sentient uh, was a little weird, and the way it ended was a little weird, um, but not bad, just weird. <laughs> um I do like, though, like, when they're leaving the cave and everything, it's like, oh, can I take one of the truffles? And it's just with the straightest face, no. <laughs> and it's like, okay, bye. <laughs> I love that. Um, and I like the concept of it, too, like the idea behind the episode about, like, oh, if you make something with love, then it'll be great. That's not necessarily true. To be honest, as someone who's always been really big into cooking and, I mean, I guess cooking shows and stuff as well, you, you, it's not enough to make something with love a lot of times. I mean, granted, if you're making something for your mom, yeah, sure, why not? But, like, you, you can't have that kind of mindset if you're running a restaurant or anything. Um, no, no, that that won't fly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you kind of have to have like, some limits with that kind of ide ideology. Um, there was the episode where Dendi tried to be KO and realized that uh, she should try to be herself, but she could still take ideas and everything from her friends. And that was all well and good. That was all fine, I guess. I, I had no real strong thoughts. 
on it. There's the episode where Real Magic Skeleton and Brandon were having the entire uh, debate about Real Magic Skeleton getting a job elsewhere. And it, that one was a really cute episode, really fun. I, I like the concept of those two having a bit of a argument and everything over this kind of thing. And I definitely see, I definitely agree with like the specific choices that each character were put into. Real Magic Skeleton wanting more from his life and Brandon being content in complacency. I feel it fits them both exactly well. Um, though I don't know why Real Magic Skeleton was trying to walk through all the action at the end there. That just felt a little silly to me and kind of unnecessary. Um, but yeah, all these episodes really worked well together and they really... Uh, they really they they kind of told a more cohesive story than a lot of these episodes have in the past. There there was definitely more of something going on that progressively worked and worked and uh well you know went through. There was more that was actually happening than in some previous episodes. So I, I appreciate that. All in all, I think that this was a good set of episodes and a great way to end off season one. It, again, it definitely felt like a fantastic finale. It felt like it actually built up to something, like, big, and some big changes were made. Um, I just don't know where it's going to go from here, though. I don't know what they're going to do from this point forward. Um, but we will continue OKKO OK in the future for sure. I just don't know when. Um... So yeah, with this done and with us ending she later on uh, this week, uh, we will be moving on, once again, as I said in the pre-thoughts, to the new schedule starting next week. And once again, the new schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday for reactions. And then Sunday will, st uh, will be the Let's Play of Ori and the Blind Forest, which will be returning. Um, not this coming Sunday, but the Sunday after, provided... Uh, like, moving stuff doesn't stop that. Because, uh, again, I am moving soon. But, yeah. Either way, uh, I'll keep you guys updated on all of that as well. And we'll figure it out as we go. But in the meantime, uh, tell me your thoughts on these final ten episodes of OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes Season 1. And tell me what you thought of this finale and the big things that it, it went to uh, include in it. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in, and for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time. And though you've come through many obstacles, 